Hey everyone, welcome back to another West Coaster video. This month we're going to be looking at the December 2013 slash January 2014 issue of West Coaster. And in this month's article, I, have, I talk about uh, hot blending. So hopefully you can see that. It is on page 31 of the issue. You can find the digital copy at westcoastersd.com as well as reading my past articles. So th for these, um, since West Coaster kind of takes off uh, the month of December, th this issue, uh, you know, I wrote the article in November, came, came out in December, and uh, we'll be back in February. And I forget what we're going to do in February, but anyway, so this issue, uh, hot blending. So the, kind of the point of this article was, as many of you know, there's been a shortage in some of the more popular hops recently, like Simcoe, Citra, and Amarillo. It seems to be really scarce, and, and Amarillo and, and Simcoe is a great hop combination. There's a lot of breweries uh, using that combination, like Alpine's Duet, and I'm sure there's plenty of others out there, and I know homebrewers like to use them. And Citra is, of course, a huge, hugely popular hop. And so what I kind of talk about is, well, you know, single hot beers are very, very cool. I've done a couple myself, and they're a great way to learn about a particular hop. And I've seen more commercial breweries producing them lately. And we had a fun time doing a single hop beer. I think I was back in 2010 on YouTube. A lot of the YouTube home brewers got together, and uh, that was that was a great, great, great way to learn about different hop varietals. Um, but a lot of times those beers aren't particularly interesting, which is where blending in the hops. I, it seems like a lot of recipes use two to three hops. And while that's great, it's not when you can't find those hops. So I kind of talk about trying different blends. You might want to try blending, you know, four, five, six varietals into your beer and that way, if maybe you can't get a hold of a particular varietal, you can maybe sub in something and get a similar character. And this sort of all came about when Robert and I won the Stone Homebrew Competition, the AHA Rally, and we weren't able to use the hops we wanted in the R&R &R Coconut IPA. So we had to come up with a blend of other hops that were available to try to simulate the character we wanted. So we ended up using a blend of, of five hops. It was Amarillo, Simcoe, Calypso, uh, Belma, and Helga hops. And uh, never used Helga before. I uh, was familiar with the other varietals. And we did a test batch at Rip Current that came out pretty, pretty good. It was a pretty nice hop character on it. So we're pretty confident to go forward with those particular five hops to try to replicate our homebrew as best we could without using all those other more tropical hop varietals that are out there. So that's kind of where this whole hop blending thing, and I've heard Mitch Steele, brewmaster at Stone, talk about it too, and, and how they use like 11 varietals and enjoy by. And, you know, that helps them get through sh shortages if you can find other hops to substitute in. And, and of course, there's already pre-blended hop well, which is a blended hops from the beginning, such as, uh, what was it, Falconer's Flight, Falconer's Flight, Seven Seas, and Zythos are all pre-blended hops that you can get. And uh, you can kind of use those to kind of mix in and sub out maybe some of, like if you can't get Simcoe, sub in like a Zythos or a, or um, Falconer's Flight or something like that. And, and don't be afraid to try some of these newer varietals that are out there that are coming out of Germany and course down New Zealand, Australia, but German, Germany is starting to produce some pretty interesting hops. So, you know, be a lookout on those. You might find something that you can get from Germany that might be able to replicate so, some of the uh, newer American varietals like your mosaics, your citras, and those type of hops. Um, and then if you can't find Nelson Sauvin, that's a hard one to replace, but I mean, there's some other, other great New Zealand hops. Talk about uh, Motueka. Um, Pacific uh, Jade, I think, is the one. Um, there's some other new ones I've never even heard of out there, too, that you can maybe try to track down. So, you know, it, it's great to uh, add complexity by adding more hops. It, it's just hard to kind of find the balance of being too muddled 
and you don't get quite the flavors you want coming through as intensely. So there's sort of a balance between just throwing in a ton of different varietals and seeing what happens and finding something that's a little more uh, balanced. So, um, you know, it's fun to play around with different combinations. I did one recently with where I didn't want to use Citra, didn't want to use Mosaic, didn't want to use Nelson Sauvin, didn't want to use uh, some of those newer popular varietals. So I went with Amarillo, Motueka, uh, Galaxy, which is a favorite of mine. I used some Cascade. Um, what was the other one? Um, I used a little bit of Simcoe, but not much. Oh, I used Zythos, the blends, and uh, all those different hops turned out to be just a big, nice, fruity beer where it kind of fooled people, thought like maybe there's some Citra in the beer, and I'm like, nope, no Citra. You know, using a combination of some other hops to sort of get like a Citra-like character, and almost almost the Nelson-like character too with like Galaxy Motueka in there as well. A lot of people would never would have guessed there was Cascade in there just based on some of the other flavors. And Cascade was a fairly prominent hop in there, if I remember right, on the ratios of, of the hops I used. Um, definitely Amarillo was the used the most in that beer, though. So, I mean, that's kind of like where I'm going with, with this article. Um, let me know your thoughts on it, some of your favorite hop combinations. But uh, it's really cool to see all the different flavors of hops producing these days. Um, I kind of listed... Uh, Pine, citrus, which range from grapefruit, lemon, orange, lime. You got the earthy, woody, spicy, floral, tropical fruits, stone fruits, melon, berries. You got your more resinous, sort of dank, if you will, characteristics. Herbal, grassy, you know, all kinds of other fruits like apples. And uh, it's just crazy these days. And and apparently there's a new varietal I need to use. Uh, it's I have in my notes here. It's uh, experimental 6300. And apparently that gives you like chocolate and or coconut characteristics to go with some other more traditional hop characteristics. So you're starting to hear about all these kind of things. And I'm going to brew a pale ale soon with Caliente hops, which I don't know if it's supposed to simulate a pepper characteristic or not, but we'll see. So um, that was kind of the, uh, the the thoughts on this month's column. I don't know how well it came out. I kind of felt like uh, I wasn't able to trans translate kind of in my head to paper quite as well but um yeah just uh let me know some good combination come up but start looking into even going back to some other uh varietals that have been around in the past too and see how well they blend with some of these newer hops too i mean that could be some really cool combinations as well so i'm gonna cheers you guys with my uh pull a sample of my burn barrel aged stout so uh until uh until next month's article Cheers.